Hello guys, how are you coming with the season finale of season three of Teen Wolf titled The Divine Move. Now we're starting off right where we lost up from last um, episode. Chris Argent coaches Scott on what to say to the police about Alice's death. They concoct a story in which two guys wearing masks try to steal their car. He is to say he thinks one of them had a knife, something sharp and metallic. Overall, he is just keep, overall he is just to keep repeating it all happened so fast. Scott wonders how Arden is able to keep focus and deal so calmly with his daughter's death. Chris simply says, it's what we do. As Deputy Parrish questions Lydia, Scott, and Isaac at the sheriff's station, they all stick to their story. The Yukimoras have taken Styles to the home where he is offered chamomile tea. Kira, her father, and her mother discuss the fact that Allison managed to kill an Oni. None of them is sure how she did it or how it could be possible. But she explains that the Nagusune made a powerful move when he split from Styles' body. Mr. Yukimura says at this point they need a divine move, one so inspired that it reverses the fate of the game and turns a losing position into a winning one. They explain that the new Gusune has, has had a sente, or the upper hand, throughout the game and Styles needs to turn the game around. Kira reminds her mother of the time she trapped it. They realized it was the power of the Nemeton that held the Nagusune for so long and asked Deaton, and decided to ask Deaton if, he, if they could trap it again. Isaac accompanies Chris Arden to his apartment. Chris says he doesn't have to stay because he'll be all right. Chris says he's dealt with it before and he can't compart compartmentalize his emotions. Isaac says that he cannot and he and Chris embrace. I'm like, oh, poor Isaac. At the sheriff's station, so Lacey instructs Deputy Parrish to keep Addison's death quiet to avoid, to avoid the press hounding her friends. The only uh, appear and immediately kill another deputy. Derek uses a Zippo lighter to, ca to cauterize Ethan's wound at the law. He says they'll be fine in a couple of hours unless whoever shot them manages to find him again. Eden is eager to find Lydia and leave Beacon Hills. Derek says she'll never leave Scott. Aiden says they all need to run and hide. Ethan wants to take Danny too, but Derek says he'll never believe him. Plus, he says Scott's friends will never leave his side. Derek then explains that the twins don't understand Scott. They want to be part of his pack by fighting for him, but Derek says that they should have been fighting for Scott's cause. Scott's cause has always been to protect his friends. He will do anything and everything to save the people he cares about. When there's no chance of winning, he keeps fighting. When all hope is lost, he finds another way. When de when he's beaten down, he stands up again. Derek says if the twins want a way to redemption, they must find another way to stand and fight. Deaton isn't sure about the Nagusine can be caught the same way it was last time because if the Nemeton was cut down, it doesn't have the same power anymore. The wood from the tree, however, does still exist in the form of boxes and other containers designed to hold powerful objects. Lydia wonders aloud if the powerful object might be the cause of Alpha Werewolf. She thinks of the cylinder that contains Talia Hayes' claws. Turns out, Deaton made that box from the wood of the Nemeton and thinks it would work. So, Nagusine Slash Styles arrives at Beacon Hills Hospital and asks a nurse to page Melissa McCall. Before the man can act, two only appear and one stabs him in the gut. Chaos reigns in the hospital corridors at the only slice through nurses, doctors, and orderlies. The only at the sheriff station is lying on his back as the sheriff and the deputy maneuver to get a look. It jumps back up and attacks. Paris and the sheriff repeat, fire repeatedly, but the two demons manage to cut them both. The wounds release a ble their wounds release a black smoke. Back at the hospital, Agent McCall and Melissa are discussing Scott. He wants to run away again and wants Melissa to explain his exit and apologize for not saying goodbye. I'm like, dude, you can't keep doing that. He's never going to trust you. <laughs> he then plans to follow, to send a follow-up email. Really, dude? Is this a business meeting to you? Like, really? Melissa says you're an idiot. She explains that if, um, Rafe, I think that he's, I think that he pronounced his name, Rafe, wants a relationship with Scott, he can't just bail after one fight. Rafe believes Scott hates him, but Agent but Melissa says he doesn't. She says that her son just wants his father to try harder. The elevator lights flicker and the machine starts to stop. The door opens and two Oni are killing people in the hallway. They swing their swords at them and Agent McCall fires his weapon. He manages to get the doors closed but realizes that Melissa has a deep cut on her leg by one of the swords. The room releases a thin black smoke. Isaac sits on Allison bed holding one of her Chinese ring daggers. The same weapons Allison stabbed him with in season 2. Oh, sentimental value. 
Chris urges him not to be, to be careful and says Allison had to bandage her fingers when she was learning to use them because she had worn, worn them raw. She did not give up, though. Isaac tells Chris about Allison's last words, believing that she was trying, that she was saying, you have to tell my father that I love him. Chris says that Allison made a point of saying it earlier on the night she died. He then begins to talk about the ritual of the silver bullet, but Isaac is already aware of it. When he learns that Allison was making a silver arrow, arrowhead, he makes the leap that it was the that this that it was this that killed the Oni. Derek calls Scott to say he had the the Tris Killian box and will meet them at the school. Lydia is struck by a rushing feeling like they're running out of time. Kira helps Styles into the room and he says he too had that feeling. Allison may actually made five silver arrowheads, but only one was ready by the time she had to leave to meet Scott. She had drawn her father's story of shattering the Oni's mask and figured out that his silver bullet and her silver arrow could take down the demons. While the bullet went straight through, the arrow stayed in the body and poisoned it. Scott, Scott Kira, and Isaac and Lydia arrived at school. Styles said they have to let him die if that's the price of killing the Nagusune, but Scott says the plan is to save Styles and he's going with that plan. They pass through the doors of the school and find themselves in a snow-covered Japanese garden. Kind of, when they walked into the garden, it reminded me of that scene from Kill Bill where it was um, Uma Thurman's character versus uh, Lucy Liu's character. That, that, that's what it reminded me of. Melissa is fading fast. She says Scott's father has to try again. She says Scott doesn't want an apology. He wants his father to do better and maybe suffer a little. She makes him a promise that he will make it work with Scott. Um, but Agent McCall then helps her to her feet and they open the doors in a hallway filled with bloody bodies and the screams of the wounded. Derek approaches the man from the stairs, from the main stairs from out the tunnel that leads to the athletic field at the school. And Gusine slash Styles is sitting on the stairs as two Oni standing, stand up higher, stand, or standing higher up to the either side of him. Derek sits on the Triskillian box in the, on the pavement and the twins join him, all are showing fangs and fur. And Gusine slash Styles taunts him by saying he's heard of an alpha pack, but not a pack of former alphas. <laughs> Trying to be funny. Hey, I thought that was kind of funny. I'm sorry. Derek says he not might be an alpha anymore, but he could still fight like one. I'm like, ooh. He and the twins roar, the only swing the swords, and the fight begins. The snowy garden seems real. The Naguzne, banished and bomber jacketed, enters doing an odd little moonwalk. Yeah, because he's like he's like doing like a uh, like a twitch thing, kinda like a little bit like the grudge. Like, you know, something you see like somebody that's like possessive, kinda like he's walking. Like that. And so, um, <clears throat> He repeats the threat from the episode real that we're going to kill all of them one by one. Only begin to appear until there are four surrounding Scott, Styles, Lydia, and Kira. The goose today tells them they are between life and death, which Lydia defines as Bardo, which which we remember from the episode Anchors. Then the goose today claims that Styles is dying and everyone he cares about is dying too. He says he captured all the little territories on the board and names the hospital, the sheriff station, and the animal clinic. Dean is attacked by two Oni. He fights well, but ends up getting sliced before they vanish. The Nagusine explains that seppuku, seppuku, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is a suicide ritual in Japan. The creature explains how the samurai will stab himself in the stomach to disembowel, but that is the samurai's trusted friend or kaish, kaish, I'm not even going to keep trying to pronounce these words. <laughs> Kaishu shai. Kai Shai. I'm not even trying to pronounce it. Uh, the Kai Shai is K A I S H A K U N I N. Who would, who would then finish him off by beheading. The Nagusane has cast Scott as Styles Kai Shukinen and says everyone will die unless Scott kills Styles in this manner. Styles asks him why, and those creatures says who in the game. <laughs> Melissa tells her ex not to leave Scott again. He says that he she told him to leave the first time, but she clarified that she told a drunk to get out of the house. I didn't tell his father to get out of his life. Agent McCall says he came back to make it up to both of them. The garden is alive with the sounds of Curious Katana and Scott's growls as they battle the four Oni as the Nagusane watches. Outside of the school, Derek and the twins engage with two Oni as Nagusane slash Styles watches. As Aiden moves up to pick up the trash can box, two more Oni appear to block him, to which he says, I hate ninjas, now the trio trio faces four Oni. 
Inside the garden, the four Oni begin to get the upper hand against Kira and Scott. Kira lo loses her katana in the snow. Um, Agent McCall begins to panic, looking around the hospital corridor and calling for help, calling for help after blood begins to seep from Melissa's mouth. Styles manages and recovers Kira's sword and makes makes it as if to stab himself. The Nagusane tosses to God to let his friend fall on his own sword and urges Styles to give up the game. But as Styles stares into reflective surfaces of the katana, he notices a business textbook lying in the snow. He then catches sight of a snow-covered classroom desk in one of the corner of the garden. The Nagusane says Styles has no moves left, but Styles says he does. He tosses the sword back to Kira and says he has a divine move. Ethan and Aiden continue to fight alongside Derek, but they are losing ground. Ethan says Aiden should take the box to Sky while he and Derek hold off the demons. Chris Argent arrives and fires a silver arrowhead into one of the Oni. It explodes into some black smoke. Isaac backflips into the fray and the Nagusane and Slash Styles runs away. Derek yells for Isaac to grab the Triskelion box and get it to Scott. Shaken with weakness, Real Styles tells Scott and Kira to stop fighting the Oni. He's come to the conclusion that none of, that none of what they are experiencing is real. He says it feels real and it will hurt, but it's an illusion. The Oni line up and slash all of them as they walk toward the door. Blood flows, but all, re but all remain standing and pushed through to the Nagusane. Scott pushes it back through the door and into the school hallway. They are alone in the school. There's no more snow, no more Oni, and no more Nagusane. Scott thinks they're one until the Gusine style shows him into a locker and knocks Kira down. Derek and Chris make short work of another Oni, but the third target manages to slice the arrow away with a sword. Chris yells for Aiden to grab the arrow and stab the Oni because it's the last one. Aiden succeeds, but is run through by the demon sword in the process. His wearable blue eyes flicker before the glow leaves him. Ethan calls out to his brother as Aiden pulls the sword from his stomach and collapses. The Gusine slash Styles is pissed. He rushes towards Styles and Lydia rambling. Divine move, divine move. You think you have any more moves at all? You you can't kill the Oni but me. Me, I'm a thousand years old. You can't kill me. Lydia responds that they can't change him, reminding him of the scroll they took from Silverfinger, Silverfinger. That sounds so weird. Silverfinger, Silverfinger. <laughs> the Gusine slash Styles remembers it says change the host. Styles says you can't be a fox and a wolf. And Scott leaps up behind the Nagusane and bites him on the arm. When he finally lets go, Kira stabs him through the heart with a katana. The Nagusane slash Styles screams, the light flickers, and a fly comes buzzing out of his mouth and down the hall. The Triskelion box comes out of nowhere, and Isaac holding it traps the evil fly inside. The Nagusane slash Styles body begins to switch, twitch and jerk. Suddenly it steals and then begins to dry out and crack like clay, collapsing into a pile of dust on the floor, which quickly dissipates. This, which pretty much disappears into nothing. Melissa McCall snaps away. Her wound now seems shallow and superficial. Deaton is fine too. The sheriff and deputy pair and the sheriff and deputy pair stand. Style collapses on the floor. He awakes a few minutes later and just about fainting. He then declares we're all alive, giving Scott pause because all isn't accurate. He says that though he simply agrees that we're all okay. Lydia senses something is wrong and stands. Outside, Ethan joins his brother, who is cradled on the Derek arms. Black goo is dripping from the um, the wounded man's mouth. The brothers are crying. Aiden wants to know if he's hurt, if it hurts Ethan as much as it does him. Ethan says it does. He lamenters that Lydia was never going to believe that he was one of the good guys, but Derek says she'll believe him. Ethan places his forehead against his brother and shushes him. Aiden dies, and Ethan weeps. Lydia runs out of school and sees what's happened. She turns her she turns back and is wrapped in Styles' arms. Later, at the Yukimura's home, Noshiko and her husband remove the stones from the gold board and Melissa confront, com, com, comforts Scott. Isaac leaves the Arjun's apartment with Chris. He has a Triskelion box with him. Kira speaks to Lydia in the hallway at the school, saying she, she doesn't know how to comfort Scott and the other werewolves about their loss. She says she's still just a new girl. At the moment, Co Coach Finstock is showing Maya Tate around the school. Lydia says Kira won't be the new girl for long. Coach is trying to get Maya to run track, saying she has excellent muscle definition. Maya replies that she sometimes ran from cougars trying to eat her, which to which Coach says got the same problem. <laughs> I don't think y'all do the same problem, because I just got what that meant. Lydia catches Maya's gaze, and they smile at each other. Later, in Scott's room, Styles watches as Scott tries to teach Maya to flick her claws. She manages it on the second try and almost slices Styles. Ethan is breaking up with Danny, saying he just can't he just can't stay. But Danny surprises him by saying it's okay. Ethan suddenly realizes that this is that he, that he is the one being broken up with and asks why. Danny says that while Ethan is incredibly good looking and smart and sweet, he just can't date a werewolf. 
Ethan is shocked, but Danny explains with a dude is Beacon Hills. They kiss and Ethan leaves. That shocked me too. I'm like, wait a minute, Danny knows who. Wait. I might, I might probably go back and watch seasons one and two to get when Danny, Danny figured out that they got well was going around Beacon Hill. <laughs> so I'm like, what? Because that shocked me. I'm like, wait a minute. I must have can't remember something. I might have to go back, double check season one and two. Like, wait a minute. When did he find this out? Um, in Styles' place, Styles stares down the evidence wall in his room. His father asks what he's doing, and Styles says, clearing my head. Dean checks in on Scott, who's tidying up in the animal clinic. He explains regression to the mean, which he said when he when he, which he suggests that things will stop being all bad or all good and revert to a more neutral place eventually. This seems to comfort Scott, but he says he's not sure it applies to a town like this. Derek is with Styles in the locker room at school, recounting a dream he had or thinks he had. In it. The Spanish-speaking hunters had tracked him to his loft and were once again demanding information about La Loba, which is the Spanish word for she-wolf. Derek says he'll never tell them where Cora has gone, but they're not talking about Cora. At that moment, a smoke grenade flies in and the room fills with gas and the hunters begin firing, firing wildly. They're taken out one by one. The assailant hit him by the smoke until finally all the hunters are down and the shotgun toting assailant steps out of the smoke and fires into Derek's gut. Derek explains to Style there are a lot of myths about ways to be turned into a werewolf. He mentions the bite and drinking rainwater from werewolf's footprint. We then see the flashback of Kate asking Chris about being turned by a scratching wolf's face. He says if the claws go deep enough, then we see he says if the claws go deep enough. Then we see Peter Hale slash Kate's throw in the episode Cold Breaker. Derek says he's not sure it's a dream because he doesn't remember waking up. This is why he comes to Style to ask how he knows he's awake. Styles has him do the finger counting thing. Styles has five fingers and one thumb on each hand, which suggests Derek is still dreaming. Derek is shot in the chest and drops down to his knees on the floor of his loft. It's real, he gasps. You're real. Out of the smoke emerges Kate Argent. Her face goes all blue, her lips turns black, and she grows fangs, and her eyes take on a greenish hue. So, apparently she's some, like, freaky-looking wolf, she-wolf type thing. So that should be interesting. So I can't. So obviously we'll have obviously Chris, Chris Kate Arden is back. So if, so when Allison in that episode earlier this season when uh she was in the woods with Lydia and she thought she saw her aunt, she probably actually did see her aunt. But you know since she now is a wolf, she she you know you know she couldn't get a good glimpse. So obviously she did see her auntie. So we have two deaths this season um, of this episode of Teen Wolf. We didn't have Allison Arden. And we had Aiden. So, and, um, according, um, Ethan will be leaving, so probably Ethan's not going to be back in this, in the coming next season, which is kind of sad. But I guess they did that because, you know, you're kind of used to the twins, you know, one twin's gone, so, you know. And then not only that, you might have a love triangle form between L- Lydia, Styles, and, um, Maya, because Styles did see for Lydia, but he still is crushing on Lydia, you know what I'm saying? Like, Mm, and I know Lydia has a, has a plus with Lydia having lost Aiden. Obviously, she's gonna grieve a little bit, but she might start, you know, liking Styles and you know, realize that, like, you know, I actually do like him. Thus, which which I conclude might form into a love triangle. Chris Arjun obviously is the well, it's not only the Arjun Arjun left, but he's gonna have to deal with a sister coming literally coming back from the dead, and then we have. Derek Hale, we don't know if he died or not because we saw him get shot, so we'll have to see next season if he's um survived. We all know Scott is a true alpha. Uh, we'll see what's going on with his relationship more with his dad and his mom. You know, is his dad actually gonna stay or is he gonna leave again, never to return? And also, Deputy Paris, what is he? Because I doubt he is human because he said he was drawn here, so I doubt he was human. Also, with Scott and Carol, are we going to see their romance blossom, or is it just going to fizzle out, you know? So that's all for um, the season finale of Team Wolf. I really love this season, especially the way they um, they did it, with the first half being all about the alpha pack, so we got to see more alphas, and kind of see how much power can make one go cuckoo, and the second half dealing with the Japanese mythology of the kutsune which was really good. It had more darker tone, more mature audience, you know, 
for a mature audience because you know it's teens and, and you know I think you know I think if you you do scenarios things you know stories like this kids teens they will watch it you just gotta make it interesting for them to watch it can't be boring like you know you're cool and in 1943, you know how teachers be sounding all drool and monotone when they teach. But I think it's good. I love Teen Wolf. It definitely has good actors and it has good writing, which is rare on TV nowadays. I mean, there's a few shows out there on TV, whether it's um, cable network or regular TV, that'd be good writing. Sometimes some shows, they only get like one season, they get cut off because you know, people not really watching it. But they rather watch freaking keeping up with the keeping up with the Kardashians. Really, I rather watch a good scripted show like Teen Wolf than keeping up with the whole Dashians. Just saying, just saying. So again, this is Teen Wolf season three season finale, and I will see you guys this fall for Teen Wolf season four. Woohoo! 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 So Connor is five, and I'll see you guys in the fall. Bye.